I've decided to sue you and Duke for damages. Agnes froze at my words. What is that? Oh, Agnes. Did you think you didn't have to pay? I can claim damages from Duke and you, who committed adultery. I'm the one who's married to him, after all. I smiled back and she got angry. What do you mean, married? He doesn't care about you. Fine, I'll pay you. $10,000? $20,000? He'll pay for the damages? Duke will. Oh, he'll pay for your share too? I'm going to marry Duke, you know? Of course he'll pay for it. He's a doctor who makes $500,000 a year. He won't feel a thing. Ah, she's mistaken. I have to correct this splendid misunderstanding. My name is Louisa, a 36-year-old surgeon. I've been married to my husband Duke, who was the same age as me, for four years, but we don't have any children. I'm still at an age where I can have them, but I've been too busy with work to start trying. I know the time limit is coming soon, but I haven't taken any action yet. But I think we're a happy couple. Tomorrow is our wedding anniversary. Our fifth anniversary. To celebrate modestly, he made a reservation for dinner. Of course, we both took the day off. I came home looking forward to tomorrow and sat down for dinner. And then he dropped the bomb. I'm sorry. Can you divorce me? What? What are you saying the day before our anniversary? You made a reservation for dinner tomorrow, didn't you? What are you talking about? That's not funny, even as a joke. My lover is pregnant. My head went blank. But at the same time, I understood suddenly. I was betrayed by Duke, I realized. Really, how far along is she? She's three months pregnant. So you wanted a child, after all? I didn't mean to. It just happened. It just happened? You cheated on me? I'm sorry. I asked my husband what kind of person his lover was. And he said she was a 23-year-old college student studying medicine. A student? You went after a girl that was much younger than you? My husband and I are both 36. She was 13 years younger than us. Besides, that age of medical students is an important time. What are you going to do? He said he wanted to marry the college girl and take responsibility. He's ruining the precious time of a college girl who wants to be a doctor. Until the child is born and settled, she has no choice but to interrupt her studies. That's right, it's a big responsibility. He cancelled tomorrow's dinner and said he would bring her home to meet me. Of all the things to do on our anniversary, I thought it was cruel, but I made up my mind. Maybe I'll be able to let go if I meet his lover. That's what I thought, and I agreed to meet the college girl. I never expected it to turn out so differently. The next day, in the afternoon, he brought the college girl home. I wondered if the university was okay at this time, but the college girl showed up. Her name is Agnes. She's a graduate student. I'm Agnes. I'm dating Duke. He was looking down. But the girl named Agnes looked up and didn't seem ashamed. She boldly introduced herself to me. She was wearing a simple suit, but her stylish bag was a brand name. I didn't know if she bought it herself or he gave it to her. I'm Louisa. Thank you for coming. Weren't you scared? Scared? 
Of what? I'm not afraid of anything because Duke will protect me. She said that and held Duke's hand. My first impression was that she was a fearless college girl. Louisa, I'm sorry. She's pregnant, so please be nice to her. Unfortunately, we couldn't have a child together, but my child is in her belly. I'm thinking of marrying her and taking responsibility. That's a big responsibility, really. You're going to have it, right? Then Agnes will miss the opportunity to become a doctor. You're prepared for that, right, Agnes? I sighed involuntarily and asked them. I was too kind to worry about the future of the person who cheated on me. Agnes said. Don't blame Duke. You're scary, you know. You couldn't have a child yourself, right? You can't have children anymore, can you, auntie? She said with a triumphant face. Whether it was because of her youth or her pregnancy, she looked down on me anyway. But I didn't have the kind of youth that would make me lose my temper here. I was surprisingly calm. Duke, can you leave us alone for a moment? I want to talk to her. He looked a little worried and moved to another room. We faced each other across the table with coffee on it. Auntie, what do you want to talk about, just the two of us? It's a continuation of what we were talking about earlier. We weren't blessed with a child between Duke and me. I didn't want to be proactive about it because it would interfere with my work. Is that sour grapes? Agnes even smiled. Does pregnancy make a woman so confident? I don't care how you take it. Sorry, auntie. He's a doctor who makes $500,000 a year, you know? From now on, he's going to be my husband, so please be nice. What? I lost my words at her smug smile. Would it be okay to show this delusional college girl a little pain? Maybe God would forgive me for a bit of revenge. That's what crossed my mind. Hey, auntie, you can't say anything? Does the fact that she's pregnant and younger than me make her so arrogant? Well, I want to think calmly, so can you take care of Duke for a few days? Of course. I live alone, so it's no problem. Duke, you can stay over with dignity now. Agnes happily called out to Duke, who was probably in the next room. There was no answer, but she didn't care and smiled at me. Did she believe she had one? But, Auntie, you have to get out of this house soon. Duke and I are going to live here. My house, which I built only two years ago. She was quite sharp to aim for this too. I really like this house, but... I made my voice smaller and Agnes looked satisfied. Oh, can you tell me one thing? Which university are you in? I'm from CB University, so what? The name of a fairly good public university came up. Does that mean she's smart, since she's studying at their medical school? Thank you. That's amazing. I'll contact you later through Duke. Yes, please do. Agnes left with Duke, looking very proud. Three days later, I went to CB University. Agnes would probably quit school to have the baby so I thought I'd make her a little farewell show. I couldn't make it a very beautiful one, though. That's why I came to see a certain person who was at this university. Louisa, how do you know our student? It's a long story. Mr. Anderson, an associate professor at the medical school, was my classmate when I was in high school. 
he was considered to have made a fairly early career as an associate professor at 36. I told her to come when her internship was over. Mr. Anderson's wife was actually my sister. My sister studied something unrelated to medicine, but she supported him. The boastful classmate became my brother-in-law. I was grateful to Mr. Anderson for his connections. Thank you. I'll bring a gift for Lucy next time. Lucy was my niece, born by my sister. She's three years old. I never had the event of having a child in my life. But I loved the child my sister gave birth to as much as I could, so I thought that was fine. Do you want some coffee, oh, is it about time for the internship to end? Mr. Anderson said that and soon there was a knock on the door. Excuse me. Mr. Anderson, this is Agnes. I'm coming in. Agnes who opened the door was startled. Hey, auntie, what are you doing here? She saw me and seemed to forget about Mr. Anderson. She showed her true colors. Mr. Anderson was about to scold Agnes. Hey, Agnes, what do you mean by auntie? This person is amazing. She's the one who wrote that. It's okay, I'm going to have some coffee with Agnes. I interrupted my indignant Mr. Anderson. Agnes, there's a cafe upstairs, right? Can you show me? She was wary, but she walked ahead of me since it was on campus. We entered the cafe in the university and ordered two coffees. We were silent until the coffee came, but as soon as it came, she started to say what she wanted to say. Hey, auntie, what are you up to? Coming to school like that? You said you'd contact me, didn't you? How did you get in here? It's annoying, you know. I thought you'd call me crying and say you're divorcing Duke. She seemed to think the university was her territory. I came to see Associate Professor Anderson, and I wanted to see you too. It was too much trouble to go through Duke every time. Even if you decide to divorce, will you hesitate by Duke's voice? Agnes smirked and showed me. No, I've made up my mind. I've decided to divorce Duke. She heard that and tried to stand up happily, but I stopped her with my hand. And, I've decided to fight too. Fight? Do you think you can win against me and Duke? Agnes smiled confidently again. That's not quite it. I've decided to sue you and Duke for damages. At my words, Agnes froze. What is that? Oh, Agnes. Did you think you didn't have to pay? I can claim damages from Duke and you, who committed adultery. I'm the one who's married to him, after all. I smiled back and she got angry. Married? He doesn't care about you. Fine, I'll pay you. $10,000? $20,000? Duke will pay for the damages, he will. Oh, he'll pay for your share too? I'm going to marry Duke, you know? Of course he'll pay for it. He's a doctor who makes $500,000 a year, he won't feel a thing. Ah, she's mistaken. I have to correct this splendid misunderstanding. Hey. Have you ever seen Duke working? Agnes answered as if it was a trivial thing. I haven't seen him in person, but I know. He's a surgeon who works at the biggest hospital in this city, right? I've gone there with him until halfway, you know. 
I'll soon see the last of her trying to act superior. Wow, you know his workplace. And, how much did he tell you his income was? Duke is too quiet to say something like that. I asked him with my hand open like this, and he nodded. Hmm, so $500,000, huh? Duke and Agnes have been dating for about half a year. There might be some things she doesn't know yet, so I decided to tell her. That's before taxes and deductions, so your take-home pay is much less. Oh, I know that much. And, he can't make that much just from the hospital salary. Also lecturing and writing books as a doctor. You're still his wife for now right? You don't want to divorce your husband who makes $500,000, do you? He'll be mine soon. Agnes seemed to want to say that. Don't you want to be a doctor who makes that much too? It's impossible to become a doctor in the shortest time from now. You're going to give birth, right? I don't care. I'm going to get married and be a housewife. Duke makes money, so it's faster to get married. What about university? Are you quitting? She didn't seem to have any intention of resuming her studies after taking a break and having the baby. I can be a winner even if I quit. Oh, you're falling into the losers, auntie. Is that why you want damages? You're running out of money, right? I tried a different approach to Agnes who was snooty. Assuming that doctors make that much, did Duke say he makes that much too? Huh? Of course he does. What are you talking about? He's going to make money for me from now on. So... Did Duke say he can make that much? Don't say things that don't make sense. Duke is a doctor, and he's making that much now, so it's obvious, right? That's a misunderstanding. I don't understand what you're saying, auntie. She put some force into the word auntie, but I didn't mind. It can't be helped that people who are 1.5 times her age look like uncles and aunties to her. Well, it's about time that the auntie tell her something good. Duke's job is not a doctor, though. Agnes was dumbfounded. What are you talking about? Duke is. Have you ever seen him working? By the way. He's a medical affairs staff at that hospital, and the surgeon who makes $500,000 is me. Didn't you notice? Agnes seemed to have no words. By the way, Duke's income is about $50,000. That's why I built that house with my money. She finally opened her mouth. But, you said you were going to leave that house. Did I say I really like this house? But, I like it, but I'll sell it for about $600,000. $600,000? You can't afford it with Duke's income alone, can you? Ugh, liar. Don't lie to me. You don't want to break up, so you're lying, right? Didn't I say I'm going to divorce him? He's the one who's leaving. Agnes can't live in that house. So, have you understood the situation correctly by now? She didn't look like she understood, but I continued. I'm the one who's a doctor. I'm the one who makes money. I'm the one who owns the house and he's the one who's leaving. I'm going to claim damages from you too who cheated on me. I don't care if you two get married or not. By the way, I published a book with this kind of paper. I took out a book from my bag and showed it to her. 
That book, the paper that Professor Anderson told us to read. I'm impressed that you remembered. I'm making some money by publishing a few more of these. I don't care. I'm going to quit after I get married. What a waste. You got into college. Can you tell your parents that you're having a shotgun wedding with a 30-something? Well, Duke will show them his financial power and persuade them. Duke is just a regular hospital staff. He doesn't have any financial power. I was deceived. I was deceived by that man. That's right, I'm a victim. Agnes shouted. But no matter how she screamed, these were the unchangeable truths. I don't know who deceived whom, but you can fight as much as you want. I've decided to break up, so it's none of my business. You looked pretty eager to get married, Agnes. She stared blankly at her coffee cup. The melody of my cell phone started to call me. I have a day off today, but it looks like I got a call from the hospital. Well, I'll pay for this, so take your time. I took the bill and left the place. Let me tell you what happened afterwards. I divorced my husband, Duke, without any trouble. I demanded and received alimony from Duke and Agnes. Duke paid from his savings, Agnes had to borrow from her parents. After my divorce from Duke, I heard that Duke and Agnes broke up instead of getting married. Duke tried to take responsibility and marry her, but Agnes refused. I wondered what they would do with the child, but it turned out to be a misunderstanding. She had mistaken her late period for pregnancy, and counted how many weeks she was pregnant by herself. She tried to sue Duke for marriage fraud, thinking he was a doctor, but failed. And that's how they ended up breaking up. Duke came to me and asked me to get back together, but of course I refused. Agnes, who turned out not to be pregnant but quit college, I heard. Her parents were furious at her disgraceful behavior and made her quit, they said. They must have spent a lot of money on tuition. How unfortunate for them. Even if Agnes wasn't forced to quit by her parents, she might have quit on her own. I had recorded everything we talked about at the cafe. I gave the audio data to my brother-in-law, Associate Professor Anderson, and she lost her position. It's obviously bad for someone who wants to be a doctor to do such a shameful thing. Even if they don't want to be a doctor, it's something they shouldn't do as a human being. I felt like she didn't understand that at all. Was it childish of me to get back at her? No, I was ridiculed so much, I think I'm allowed a little. I ended the young Agnes's life in a way, but it was her own fault. She's an adult who's over 20, not 18, so of course her actions have consequences. I also sent the audio data politely to Agnes's parents' house. Her parents are probably disciplining her strictly, albeit belatedly. Duke also seemed to have been exposed at work and had to change his workplace. It's not surprising that he was found out, since we divorced at the same hospital. I'm the victim who was cheated on, so I'm working as usual with dignity. I heard rumors from a mutual friend that Duke changed jobs and his income decreased, and he's struggling. He should be grateful that I didn't punish him socially like Agnes. It was a pity for the five years we were married. After that, I've been living peacefully as if I had been alone from the start. I felt a bit lonely, but I forgot about it because I was busy with work. The other day, I had a chance to meet a nice 42-year-old man. It was during a meeting with another hospital. He also has a divorce history, he said. We might get along well. Sorry, Duke and Agnes, but I'm enjoying my life. How did you like this story? Please also subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video.